It's time to talk about false flags. This is about the Nord Stream pipeline, who blew it up, how it's being investigated, and how it ties into hybrid warfare. I'm Dr. K, a political scientist who looks at how information is shared. And there's a lot of events happening that have people wondering who is behind them. Let's look at some of the tactics that are used to mislead people. A false flag operation describes when one group is responsible for an action and tries to pin the blame on another party. The sabotage of the Nord Stream pipeline in the Baltic Sea in late September 2022 has left many asking who's really responsible as the list keeps getting longer and longer. On March 7th, 2023, the New York Times, citing only a U.S. official, wrote that it was probably a pro-Ukrainian commando. Within hours, hundreds of news articles with similar headlines quoting the New York Times were easy to find. If Ukraine was behind it, that's state-sponsored terrorism on a pipeline that was created to send cheap Russian gas to Europe. Dependent on outside help, with the war dragging on in Ukraine, maintaining international support, staying the good guy in this David versus Goliath scenario is more important than ever for Ukraine. Would they risk this? The Nord Stream pipeline was tied to Ukrainian security issues since the start of the project, because as long as gas flowed through Ukraine, Ukraine had leverage to keep Russian aggression in check, as they could control the flow of cash going back to Russia. The project started in 2016. In 2014, Russia had already annexed part of Ukraine and was fighting a proxy war in other areas. Ukraine always saw Nord Stream's operation as a threat to its security. Now let's fast forward to September 26, 2022. Germany had already stopped their involvement in February in the project pipeline as a reaction to Russia recognizing Luhansk and Donetsk as independent states. And then at around about 70 meters underwater, an explosion was detected by seismologists in Denmark and Sweden. The seabed pipeline had ruptured with gas escaping into the ocean that bubbled to the surface in the days afterwards. The project that Ukraine had warned would put them in danger. The project, which would secure gas revenues to Russia, had been sabotaged. sabotaged. As soon as the news broke, the Poland and Ukraine accused Russia of planting explosives, but they didn't have any evidence. There was speculation that it was the U.S. where American policymakers had always thought Nord Stream was problematic because of security implications, and they had been trying to push American fracked liquefied natural gas, or LNG, on the European market. There were also theories that the explosion, now of the useless pipeline, was a flex to show that some group could do damage to deep sea internet cables, which could affect huge parts of the globe all at once and would affect security. Then in February 2023, American journalist Seymour Hirsch self-published a report claiming the U.S. had destroyed the pipelines using an American special commando unit with the help of Norway, authorized by President Joe Biden personally. The U.S. government denied any involvement and Hirsch did not name his source. In early March, German officials released information about the evidence they'd collected and security authorities in Germany, Denmark, Sweden, and the Netherlands and the U.S. had been involved in the investigation. According to the Germans, a commando of six, five men and one woman rented a boat and sailed to Bornholm, a Danish island in the Baltic Sea, where the pipeline exploded. After returning, investigators found traces of professional explosives in the boat's kitchen, which matched the type used in the attack. The group also reportedly used what later turned out to be forged Ukrainian passports, and German officials tracked the financial transactions back and led to a Polish company owned by two Ukrainians. So did the Ukrainians do it? As one security expert points out, the headline evidence leads to Ukraine is the short form for evidence leads to a Polish company owned by Ukrainians, which is really not news at all. There's no hard proof that the Ukrainian government is involved or has any knowledge. Ukraine continues to deny involvement just like in September, and Kyiv's reaction is predictable. This is an extremely sensitive situation. The professionalism needed to carry out this sabotage from the quality of the fake documents to the professional explosives to the skill required to dive to the pipeline depth leaves only a handful of groups 
that have the potential to complete an attack like this, and you need resources that usually only state agencies can provide. In international security circles, it's not ruled out that this could still be a false flag operation. Taught in U.S. history classes as the start of World War II, probably the most well-known false flag attack justified the 1939 invasion of Poland. That's when seven German SS soldiers, pretending to be Polish, stormed a German radio station and went on the air to say that the station was now in Polish hands. The next day, Adolf Hitler used the incidents to justify his invasion of Poland. Russia has a long history of engaging in false flag operations to exonerate itself or its allies, deflect blame, spread chaos, and justify military action. Just a few months after Germany invaded Poland, a Russian village close to the Finnish border came under shelling. The Soviet Union alleged it was a Finnish attack that broke the non-aggression pact, starting the so-called Winter War. Boris Yeltsin, the first president of the Russian Federation, admitted in 1994 that the Winter War was a Soviet war of aggression. In 2008, Russia sent unmarked soldiers to stir unrest in Georgia. When Georgia's government responded, Russia invaded. In 2014, Russian special forces entered Ukraine pretending to be local self-defense forces and seized government buildings, leading to Russia's occupation of Crimea. Before the 2022 invasion of Ukraine, British and U.S. security services were warning that Russia was planning false flag attacks again. There were reports of pre-positioned groups of operatives trained in urban warfare and in using explosives to carry out acts of sabotage against Russia's own proxy forces. False flag operations are part of the Kremlin's hybrid war playbook. And the way social media works makes these plays easier. And there is an actual playbook with procedure and strategies. We know this from the Surikov leaks, emails that illustrated Russian plans to politically upset Ukraine. The Kremlin has a long history of what they call informational psychological operations that were under the Soviets coordinated by the KGB and continued by other agencies after the Soviet Union fell. Hybrid warfare is the overlap of conventional and unconventional instruments of power and tools of subversion. There are countless combinations with these options. It's also disinformation with no position or agenda. It's not right or left. It's both causing confusion and distrust. And we all know about confirmation bias in social media. The echo chamber algorithms that tend to repeat back to us what we already believe because people like to feel right and they like to have their opinions confirmed. Depending on your social media bubble and what platforms you use, the news is even presented to you in your passive feed already with the slant. A lot of times this influence isn't outright lies. It's poor wording or exaggerations that can't be proven wrong, preventing social media companies from flagging the misleading content. However, misconceptions last after people receive corrective messages. This is called continued influence effect. The first time you learn about something, it's what stays with you. Research shows that people often rely on misinformation in their reasoning, even after the information has been retracted. It's really hard to put a genie back in the bottle. So how does this tie into false flag attacks? Some reports about the September 2022 sabotage of the Nord Stream pipeline on the Baltic seabed mention the possibility of false flag attacks. And yes, for generations, governments have mounted false flag operations to justify military actions by deceptively accusing an enemy of a violent act. And this is where it gets tricky. The actual false flag operations plotted in recent history, despite the Russian examples that I've listed, are outnumbered by conspiracy theories that label real, verifiable crisis events as false flags. There's a whole area of research about conspiracy theorists and things they're labeling as false flag operations. This makes it really problematic when there is consistent proof that a country uses false flags. By calling something a false flag, it puts you in the same box with other conspiracy theorists who have been linked through research to having low educational levels, extreme right-wing political orientations, and paranoid personality traits. By reporting on the possibility that an event could be false flag, it lowers trust in some reporting. It lowers trust in governments. 
and it lowers trust in the behavior of countries towards agreed upon norms. And ruining trust in institutions is also a part of hybrid warfare. On March 7th, both the New York Times and the German newspaper Die Zeit had long articles about the Nord Stream sabotage, but neither article really had proof, only who was suspected. The first suspect back then was Russia. Shortly after the detonations, Polish and Ukrainian politicians had accused them. The speculation was fueled by the capabilities of the Russian Navy with its spy submarines that could attach and detonate an explosive charge on the seafloor. Sweden and Denmark also reported hearing sonar sounds that sounded like submarines. Russia denied any involvement. Traces now lead to Ukraine, but even the traditionally slow to react Germans spoke up. The German defense minister Boris Pistorius said it couldn't be ruled out that it was a false flag operation used to accuse pro-Ukrainian groups. Germany has given Ukraine more weapons than any other country in the European Union. Many Germans support the government's help, but some worry that sending weapons into a war zone will make the conflict last longer and could start a bigger war. Any sign that Ukraine's government was behind the attack on the pipeline could make it harder for Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz to keep giving Ukrainian soldiers training and heavy weapons like tanks. And even though Ukraine depends on the United States too for military intelligence and diplomatic support, the reports that Ukrainian officials are not always honest with their American counterparts about their military operations, especially those against Russian targets behind enemy lines. U.S. officials are frustrated by these operations, according to accounts, because they don't improve Ukraine's position on the battlefield and turn off European allies, and the U.S. doesn't want to have to make any unilateral decisions. Ukraine recognizes the potential for false flags and knows they're hard to debunk, so Ukraine works on something called pre-bunking. Because there is a Kremlin playbook, there is an effort to show people the tactics and tropes of misleading information before they encounter it in the wild. Having faced false Russian claims for years, Kyiv has learned what to expect from Moscow. A good example of a pre-bunk is probably when, in February, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky publicly warned Moldova that Kyiv's intelligence uncovered a Russian plan to disrupt the country. Then on March 9th, Russian state news agencies reported that security services in the Moscow-backed breakaway Transnistrian region of Moldova, which shares a 450-kilometer border with Ukraine, had thwarted a Ukrainian assassination attempt against their region's leader. Another thing about false flags is they're a distraction. By shifting the focus to Nord Stream again and pointing the finger at Ukraine, attention is taken away from other areas. Between March 7th and March 9th, there was precarious situations at the nuclear facility under Russian control in Ukraine and another barrage of missiles. So who damaged Nord Stream? Let's hope we don't have to wait 55 years like the Finns did to find out who started the Winter War. False flag operations don't happen as often as people expect. But Russia does have a proven record of conducting them, and the general skepticism about how the world works, the breaking down of trust, that creates a fertile environment for manipulation. And this is a really complex topic, and in the description of this video, there are links to the articles I mentioned and the research I've just summarized. And if you feel better informed, why don't you subscribe to my channel?